In the last Undergrounds video, I began working to make the larger cave safer and fit for moving into in order to set up shop, as well as conduct a little cave exploration, which ended up in the death of one of my parrots. Now it's time to see whether the sheer amounts of clearing truly has made it safer. At the beginning of this session, I was messing a little with my settings in order to remove the button icons on each side of the screen, so both myself and you guys can see each item I hold in its entirety. After dealing with that, I got by the local strip populace and got back into the larger cave, and continued to mine this out, since my goal for this session was to begin the full process of moving in and building up a base. After a little clearing, I shook Lucky with two Endermen, both of which had grass blocks ready for collection. I'll just shove. Yeah, because it's an Enderman. Oh, he's got a grass block! Ooh. Oh! Two! Don't mind if I do. I hope he's not mad. I don't want two mad at me, because that'll be horrible. <laughs> Sweet! Alright, got some more grass, grass blocks, just what I'm wanting. After collecting the grass blocks, I continued to mine out the cave, hollowing it further towards the wall. At which point I decided to fix my incredibly pointless tunnel system, and get rid of the one block wall which I had placed between them, and I can definitely say that the end result looked a lot better. After some fixing was done, I then witnessed a new friend drop into the cave. I suppose his previous owner must have perished to the dangers of the land above. With this new llama in tow, I decided to take him back to the strip and give my nameless pet llama better company than a bunch of parrots. Luckily for me, I was able to make it back before the strip got invaded for the hundredth time. Oh, sugar! Okay, you know, I need to be quick. I need to be quick. Come, 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 come. Oh, see down, oh, see down. Come in, come in. My time back in the strip mainly comprised of potato farming and item arrangement, before I ran back towards the larger cave, narrowly avoiding danger and getting an invitation randomly. Jeez. Look at that. And I just received a random invitation. Why did I receive a random invitation? After receiving a random invitation, I continued to hollow out the cave, block by block, learning with each clearance that the hostile mobs seemed to be evolving in both directions, some taking the leap of faith to get down into the cave, and others beginning to utilise waterfalls to begin their own form of small-scale attacks. Also during this period, I obtained a chicken, which I got to safety in a hurry to prevent another ocelot incident. And I also decided to make the change from stone to iron picks, as it helped to get the clearance done a lot faster. With the use of better picks, I finished the huge expansion. Dude. The huge, the sheer expansion. But I wasn't done yet, as now I was having to clear up some of the tripstone, to both make room and prevent hostile mobs from having a space to spawn. And once they were cleared, I was briefly mining some coal, when I seemingly for no reason phased through the ore. Yeah, I don't know why that happened either. The heck? After this, I started running around, collecting ores and began terraforming the part of the cave where the dripstone used to be. But before I could do anything, a phantom got in, and I decided to take, or should I say, build the fight to them. Oh, I hear that. Oh, it's time. Come on then. Come on then. Oh, oh thank you, lag. That was much appreciated. Okay, 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 he's up there, he's up there. I think he's up there. 
Oh no, my worst nightmare, just, my two worst nightmares just happen to be at the bottom of this. Oh, this is great, okay. It's over there now. Time to murder this man. I mean, bird. They. What, what, what even are phantoms? Like, legit, what even are they? Okay. One more block and I'll be able to reach him. Oh, yeah. Yeah! Suck it! Oh man! That actually feels so good to get! Oh, you would not believe! Oh, you. Oh my god, I don't make a soundtrack playing right now, it's just the perfect one for this. <gasps> he survived! <laughs> he broke his neck for a moment, but he survived. Hi there, bud! And once the Phantom was taken care of, I discovered that part of my cave was surrounded by water, which I decided to take the plunge into, temporarily changing the series from Undergrounds to Minecraft Underwater, before coming out and having an emotional moment where memories of Minecraft from my childhood flooded me. I'll probably do a separate thing for this moment though, as it felt very important to me. Now it's time to begin moving the base and experience all the dangers that came with it. So I went and got items sorted at the strip to be ready to take with me. But the strip wasn't going to let me go so easily, as the local populace arrived in full force, placing me in a critical state. Yeah, it's up. Ooh. Ooh. Oh no, one of my parasites is with me. Shoot! 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 Oh! Okay, I need to trust in the shield. I need to trust in the shield. Whoa! Later! This did get me to create a temporary door in the strip for easy access and a better way for clearing out any mobs who decided to camp outside of it. Upon returning to the larger cave, I came across a zombie in full chainmail armour, and considering my iron armour was on the brink of breaking, this freebie couldn't have come at a better time. But once again, right after gaining something grand, the undergrounds once again had to remind me how dangerous it can be. That adventure for another time. You oh my word! What is going on in there? I wanna get it. Oh! Oh sugar! Oh sugar! Hi! Oh, that was close. Oh, I, got I then continued moving items into the larger cave and went off to terraform more of the cave corner. Why, you may ask? Well, it was to make an area for trees to grow up in, and this resulted in a tree that I eventually decided to keep. Okay, this thing is greedy this time round. Jeez. Oh my word! The amount of wood on that! I don't even want to cut that down. That is phenomenal. I am leaving that as it is. So, I grew up trees, trapped a new friend, and decided to go off cave exploring once again. And I can only describe what happened in this small cave as a battlefield experience. Yeah. 
Oh, they have all sides spawning. Let's go. <laughs> Ow. Fun time. 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 <laughs> oh, more diamond. Let's go. Woo! Oh. 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 <laughs> No way! <laughs> that was incredible. She I then entered the higher section of the cave that had one too many zombies for my liking. Oh my word! Oh goodness! Oh no! Oh no! No 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 no! Oh gosh! Oh my word! Okay, hang on, hang on. Oh, ow, ow, ow. There is too many of them. There is straight up too many of them. Two. That was one, two. Three. I'm gonna die! And after that encounter with the zombies, I then entered the other area of the cave where I had seen a large group of mobs. And once again, this kind of put me in a critical situation. Dude, I can see the geode right there. So pretty. If I can get past this bit... Shoot! Shoot! <laughs> After some clearing and many close encounters, I returned to where I'd begun moving my items and began smelting the iron I had gathered and built a campfire to cook up food of the meat of many fallen animals. After the many dangers the undergrounds had thrown at me, I felt it was time to finally start building a house so the place could at least feel more like home. I decided deep slate would be a good material to use as it would fit nicely with the aesthetic design of the cave, but I found out via Stonecutter that deep slate had three other versions of itself which all looked nice, so in order to settle on which one I'd like to use, I made one of each and quickly put them down next to each other, which ultimately landed on me choosing the deep slate tiles as my main block. With this choice made, I began construction using jungle wood for doors and acacia wood to make windows out of trap doors, and of course, dark oak wood for the floor. I did have to enter back into the cave though, in order to gather some more deep slate. But the house was coming nicely together because of it. I even used some polished diorite to add an even greater design look to the outside of what I'd be calling my home. But like all things I do in this series, I struck trouble as my dark oak saplings were short, and I require about four of these saplings to grow a single tree. This means if I can't get a positive trade off my next dark oak tree, it will then mean that I might have to build my floor out of something else and completely replace all the bits of dark oak wood I've used thus far. This session has been a huge one, and it's shown how much time has to be given in order to begin making a huge underground cave both safe and deliverable to an extent. And just like always, the undergrounds itself continues to prove how dangerous it can be, and with some of the hostile mobs seeming to be getting smarter in a way, it means I have to ensure that I am ready to continue adapting to the underground environments.